Hello and welcome to our discussion of the reading Mastering the Three Worlds of Information Technology by Andrew McAfee. There are three categories of IT, each of which provides different organizational capabilities, and demands very different kinds of management interventions. Computer hardware keeps getting faster, cheaper, and more portable. New technologies such as mashups, blogs, wikis, and business analytics systems have captured the imagination. Corporate IT spending has bounced back from the plunge it took in 2001. By 2004, U.S. corporations' investment in IT per employee averaged $5,100. In fact, American companies spend as much on IT each year as they do on offices, warehouses, and factories put together. However, IT threatens to overwhelm general managers. One of the biggest problems companies face is coping with the abundance of technologies in the marketplace. It's hard for executives to figure out what all those systems, applications, and acronyms do, let alone decide which ones they should purchase and how to successfully adopt them. Most managers feel ill-equipped to navigate the constantly changing technology landscape and thus involve themselves less and less with IT. Corporate IT projects have often delivered underwhelming results or been outright failures. Consider the example of American pharmaceutical distributor Foxmire Drug. It went into Chapter 11 and was sold in 1997 when a $100 million IT project failed. These catastrophes may be less frequent today than in the past, but frustration, delay, and disappointment are all too common. A majority of American executives responsible for IT admitted that aligning business and IT strategy was a major problem. 51% of large-scale IT efforts finished later than expected and ran over budget. Only 10% of companies believed they were getting high returns from IT. Investments 47% felt that returns were low, negative, or unknown. Not surprisingly, any fresh IT proposal sparks fiery debates in boardrooms. Executives try to delegate, outsource, rent, rationalize, minimize, and generally remove IT from their already long list of concerns. However, managers who distance themselves from IT abdicate a critical responsibility. Executives have three roles to play in managing IT. 1. They must help select technologies. 2. Nurture adoption of these technologies. 3. Ensure exploitation of these technologies. However, managers need not do all those things each time they buy a new technology. Different types of IT result in different kinds of organizational change when they are implemented. Executives must tailor their roles to the technologies they are using. A critical aspect here is that executives stop looking at IT projects as technology installations and start looking at them as periods of organizational change that they have a responsibility to manage. Technology projects are increasingly becoming managerial challenges rather than technical ones. More importantly, a well-run IT department is not enough to handle these technology projects. Line managers have important responsibilities in implementing these projects. Success with IT requires commitment of business executives, but they are not clear where, when, and how they should get involved. That's partly because executives usually operate without 1. A comprehensive model of what IT does for companies. 1. How IT can affect organizations. 2. What managers must do to ensure that IT initiatives succeed. A good model or theory does two things. 1. It groups important phenomena into categories. 2. Within categories, it makes statements of cause and effect. However, existing IT models do not help executives choose among technologies. One way to build a comprehensive model is to place IT in a historical context. Economists and business historians agree that IT is the latest in a series of general-purpose technologies. Electric power, the transistor, and the laser are examples of general-purpose technologies that came about in the 19th and 20th centuries. 
companies can incorporate some general-purpose technologies into processes. All general-purpose technologies share specific characteristics. The performance of such technologies improves dramatically over time. Crucially, general-purpose technologies deliver greater benefits as people invent or develop complements that multiply the power, impact, and uses of general-purpose technologies. For instance, in 1970, fiber optic cables enabled companies to employ lasers, which had already been in use for a decade, for data transmission. The complements of process general purpose technologies are organizational innovations, or changes in the way companies get work done. Research suggests that four organizational complements 1. Better skilled workers, 2. Higher levels of teamwork. 3. Redesigned processes. And 4. New decision rights. Allow process general purpose technologies to deliver improved performance. For the deeper understanding of this fact, read the example of water wheels or steam engines discussed in the reading. These insights are also true of IT, but with one distinction. Information technologies do not enjoy the same relationships with the four organizational complements that other process general purpose technologies have. Some information technologies can deliver results without the complements being in place. Other information technologies allow the complements to emerge over time. Still, other information technologies impose the complements they need as soon as companies deploy the technologies. Based on those variations, we can classify IT into three categories. See the exhibit the three varieties of work changing IT. Each offers companies distinctive capabilities, delivers unique benefits, and triggers organizational changes of different types and magnitudes. This classification can help leaders understand which technologies they must invest in as well as what they should do to maximize returns. It can also indicate which IT initiatives are going to be relatively easy to implement and on which projects executives should focus. Information technology sets off several kinds of revolutions in organizations because technologies fall into three distinct categories. Function IT, FIT. Function IT, FIT, includes technologies that make the execution of standalone tasks more efficient. Word processors and spreadsheets are the most common examples of this IT category. Design engineers, accountants, doctors, graphic artists, and a host of other specialists and knowledge workers use FIT all the time. People can get the most value from these technologies when their complements are in place but can also use FIT without all of the complements. For instance, an R&D engineer can use a computer-aided design, CAD program to improve the way he does his work without making any changes in how the rest of the department functions. Furthermore, FITs do not bring their complements with them. CAD software, for example, does not specify the processes that make the most of its power. Companies must identify the complements FIT needs and either develop them or allow users to create them. FIT has some distinct capabilities. One. Enhancing experimentation capacity. 2. Increasing precision. Network IT, NIT. Network IT, NIT, provides a means by which people can communicate with one another. Network technologies include email, instant messaging, blogs, and groupware like Lotus Notes. NIT allows people to interact, but it doesn't define how they should interact. NIT gives people freedom to experiment instead of telling them what they must do. Unlike FIT, Network IT brings complements with it but allows users to implement and modify them over time. NIT has three principal capabilities. 1. Facilitating collaboration. 2. Allowing expressions of judgment. 3. Fostering emergence. Enterprise IT, EIT. Enterprise IT. EIT, is the type of IT application that companies adopt to restructure interactions among groups of employees or with business partners. Applications that define entire business processes, 
such as CRM and SCM, as well as technologies, such as electronic data interchange fall into this category. Enterprise technologies are very much top-down. Enterprise IT, EIT, are purchased and imposed on organizations by senior management. Companies cannot adopt IT without introducing new interdependencies, processes, and decision rights. Moreover, companies can't slowly create the complements to IT. Changes become necessary as soon as the new systems go live. To get a deeper understanding of this fact, review the CVS Pharmacy example in the reading. The primary capabilities of IT are 1. Redesigning business processes 2. Standardizing workflows 3. Monitoring activities and events efficiently Across the three IT categories, executives have three tasks. First, they must help select IT applications that will deliver the organizational capabilities they desire. Second, they must lead adoption efforts that result in the creation of complements for those technologies. Third, they must shape the exploitation of IT by ensuring that technologies, capabilities, and complements stay aligned. IT Selection Companies often select IT applications after one of their executives hears about a new technology and wonders why his or her organization has not invested in it yet. This approach is pervasive. Companies will even invest in a technology because everyone else in the industry has purchased it or because it comes with glowing recommendations from consultants, analysts, and journalists. The problem with this approach is that there is an endless supply of new applications, partly because of innovation and partly because of clever rebranding. Companies cannot possibly evaluate all the new applications available in the market. Another, more fundamental, problem is that this method of choosing applications reflects an outside-in approach. Executives describe a technology that's available in the outside world and propose that it should be brought into the company. No one stops to think about whether the organization actually needs the capabilities that the technology offers. For some important questions in this regard, read page 7 of the reading and also see the sidebar of the IT dialogue. An inside-out approach puts the spotlight squarely on the business before evaluating the technology landscape. This approach focuses on the capabilities that IT can provide rather than on the technologies themselves. A discussion among executives about capabilities will highlight what the business most wants to be good at. This discussion will show whether there's agreement about what the business needs to be good at. Once the company's business needs are clear, the technologies it requires will come into focus. Typically, FIT delivers productivity and optimization, NET increases collaboration, and IT helps standardize and monitor work. Thus, when executives decide what capabilities they need, they will know what kind of IT to buy and the nature of the initiatives they must manage. It's important for executives to know how long a proposed IT effort will take and what it will cost, but the ROI figure is nearly worth less. Information technology is never a sure bet because of the complex interplay between technologies, capabilities, and complements. Smart companies spend little time predicting the financial benefits that will accrue from IT efforts. They keep track of spending and milestones and constantly check to see if they are on track to gain the IT-based capabilities they desire. Once the company's business needs are clear, the technologies it requires will come into focus. For the deeper understanding, go through Cisco ERP example in the reading, IT Adoption. After IT selection, executives' attention turns to adoption. Adoption refers to the hard work of putting the technologies into productive use. At this stage, managers' main responsibility is to help create the complements that will maximize IT's value. FIT doesn't bring its complements with it, so managers must find ways of identifying them. See the example of BMW in the reading. There's an interesting dichotomy in executives' roles when it comes to knit adoption. Because the use of such technologies is voluntary rather than mandatory, they make users feel more, rather than less, in control of their work. As a result, 
their adoption isn't difficult. However, managers still have to intervene with new technologies, such as groupware, wikis, and blogs, by demonstrating how they can be used and by setting norms for participation. Once network technologies are properly established, their use takes off, and the challenge for managers is to refrain from intervening too often or with too heavy a hand. In stark contrast to fit and knit, enterprise IT is hard for companies to adopt. The benefits look great to people at the top, but employees usually dislike IT technologies. IT don't just enable new ways of working, they dictate them. Enterprise systems define new cross-function business processes, impose the processes on employees without allowing employees to modify them, and bring higher levels of oversight. Most employees don't like having new processes dictated to them by a piece of software and will use a variety of techniques to prevent the adoption of enterprise technologies. Executives must intervene forcefully throughout IT adoption efforts because new processes, changed decision rights, and greater interdependence come hand in hand with these technologies. In fact, the biggest mistake business leaders make is to underestimate resistance when they impose changes in the ways people work. See example of Boston-based hospital setup in the reading. IT adoptions can give rise to several kinds of problems. For example, IT projects often become delayed as employees and managers negotiate the use of complements, such as new processes, that the technology has imposed. Companies often settle for solutions that are more modest than originally planned and gain only some of the capabilities they had initially sought. Firms may even abandon IT adoptions altogether. Even worse, some businesses don't abandon an IT project when they should, which wreaks havoc on performance. See example of Hershey and Nike in the reading. All the successful IT adoptions use the same process for avoiding failure. The most important participants in IT adoption are not IT specialists or consultants but business leaders from the areas affected by the new technology. The more areas there are, and the more their work is being changed, the more the adoption effort needs a seasoned leader. A mid-level project manager does not have the formal or informal authority required to make and implement these tough decisions. Leaders who successfully implement IT try to build consensus in the organization, but they're also willing to push ahead without having everyone on board every step of the way. IT Exploitation A business leader's third IT-related responsibility is to extract the maximum benefit from technologies once they are in place. Companies can best exploit fit by fine-tuning organizational complements. See example of 1995 America's Cup sailing competition in the reading. Employees exploit older nits such as email and instant messaging on their own, but business leaders have a role to play in exploiting newer technologies like blogs and wikis. They can help sustain and increase the use of complements to make the technology continually more effective, primarily by guiding users. Interestingly, IT's exploitation is often easier than its adoption. This is because the work of imposing new processes is done by this stage, the manager's task is to leverage already standardized data and workflows. Few employees and managers have problems with that. They're eager to get the most out of a system that was so much trouble to set up. Exploiting IT sometimes requires adding a new fit on top of it. See example of food services giant Cisco in the reading. Some companies have exploited enterprise systems by extending them to customers, suppliers, and joint venture partners. That expands businesses' monitoring capabilities and provides levels of control that they could otherwise have achieved only by employing more people. See example of Argentine grain producer Los Crabo. For a resource to have an impact on a company's competitive position, it must be valuable, rare, inimitable, and non-substitutable. While the software itself might not be any of those things, a successfully implemented system isn't easy to replicate. Because of the managerial challenges inherent in its implementation, IT meets all four criteria when a company succeeds in applying a technology and, consequently, 
gains valuable capabilities.